Uh, hi everyone. In this video, we are going to learn about LLMs. Uh, fine tuning LLMs has uh, emerged as one of the very important industry use case. And if you're expert or good in fine tuning LLMs, there is a lot of job opportunities out there. Uh, we will look at how we can fine tune Quantu and B uh, class of models. Quantu models are very good on many different benchmarks and in general actually are reasonable if you have done inferences using them. Uh, this notebook is very accessible. So we will run this notebook on the free tire of Google Colab. So the resources will be quite limited for us. Like in the free tire, we have only 15 GB RAM. And uh, GPU RAM like is limited, disk is limited, system RAM is also limited. Within all these limitations, we'll see that assembly model can be run and we will use uh, the magic of quantization. I'll show you a complete working notebook. There are many different libraries which I have glued here together. Now, these different libraries are nothing but just software stacks to help our LLM uh, and to for us to provide different functionality during this entire process. Uh, you don't have to understand these libraries in detail as long as you know what they are doing and uh, you can fine tune this LLM for any of your own use cases without going into details of these libraries. I will highlight some of the most important stuff that you should know when you're modifying this for your own use case. But other than that, uh, you can uh, use this uh, notebook directly out of box for many of the simpler uh, testing and all. When you have large GPUs, you can do more things with it, of course. Uh, we are going to use Quentu 7B Instruct Model. Instruct Model is available open source on the Hugging Face and he's fine tuned to follow specific instructions. Uh, this is the path where I want to save the new model when it's fine tuned. We are going to use QLora, Quantize LoRa kind of a setting. Uh, LoRa attention layers, I am giving it a dimension of two. The reason is that uh, uh, the limitations of the free tire, like the 15 GB RAM limitations I have. But actually you can uh, kind of play here with eight and 16, which are widely used when you are trying to go for say somewhat production use cases. Um, again, this is the weight of LoRa. Um, many of these parameters you can fine tune and play with, but uh, some of these numbers which I'm showing in this notebook actually work based on many different testings which we have done. Uh, this is also the path where I want to store um, like the um, loss and evaluations as they're proceeding further. We are going to use kind of uh, um, optimizer, a learning risk scheduler, and I'm limiting the max steps to 100. Uh, so max steps, so for example, in every training step, it will uh, compute gradients and based on different settings, which will look further, uh, that update will happen. Um, so my data set here is quite large. So we are limiting the training only to few steps and we'll see even with limited steps, it, it does very good. So when you are free and more have more time, you want to run it for a few hours, you can increase these steps. We are going to save our model every 30 uh, checkpoints. And this is also the same uh, number of uh, like uh, steps where um, we'll also look into evaluation loss and training losses. Uh, I'm going to use double quantization. On my channel, you will find some videos on quantization where we go into detail on visualizing quantization and how LLMs are doing quantizations. That will clarify more. But in this part of notebook, we are going to set up some um, kind of options for us to follow quantization. We are going to use SFT kind of training, supervised uh, fine tuning. And uh, max uh, sequence length, again, uh, the use case which, going, we, which we are going to use today is quite simple. So let us kind of uh, also talk about the use case. The use case we are, which, we are, which we are going to have is news classification. Uh, in the past, uh, we will have to build some uh, models for news classification, but uh, LLMs actually work out of box uh, by just uh, prompt tuning can pass in the prompt and LLMs will work out of box. For example, the Quantum model just out of box will give us good accuracy and we can further tune it to get even better accuracies. Uh, some of these parameters are just library parameters which you are setting in and you can follow the notebook alongside to play with them further. And some of the comments which are present here are to guide that what each of parameters is going to do. Uh, you will have to add your Hugging Face token here because this model we are going to download from Hugging Face. So if you have if you don't have a hacking face token, you will have to go and create your uh, hacking face account and request access to the Quantu class of models. Uh, access gets uh, very easily approved. Once you have it, you will have to put your token here. Uh, so the model which we are going to use actually is kind of a casual LLM. We are going to do the pre-trained pre model. 
And uh, overall, this model kind of shards, as you see here, once you're loaded them, actually without quantization, they, they will not easily fit uh, in your RAM. So with quantization, we can actually load and there's enough space to fine tune further. We are also going to load uh, the tokenizer. Um, so there's limitation on how much runtime time I have. So it's asking me to disconnect or if I want to reconnect, but since the notebook has already worked and the model is trained, so I'm just going to follow further with the video. You can load your um, kind of uh, tokenizer and here we are going to use a uh, quant tokenizer actually. Uh, so sometimes a tokenizer may not have bad tokens and of sentence token set. So this is uh, where you will, you can check and use these things and set them properly. Uh, in this case, the Quen actually have uh, these things set very well and I have not faced issues when fine tuning Quen models. This is a function which given a model and the input the kind of uh, tokens is going to produce output for us. You can specify how many max tokens we need to produce. Since we are going to only produce classification, whether it's uh, kind of uh, what kind of news, uh, I'm just limited the token by default to some number. We are going to use a news classification data set. This is how the data set look like, for example, there's some news on India and US. These are the real, real news connect, collected and you can actually look about this data set online. It has uh, roughly 120K uh, news samples from the real world. There are four different classes in this news, world, sports, business, and science tech. We want to classify this news based on its content into one of these four classes. Uh, if you want to see how many number of layers in the Quen model, you can actually just put the model and run it in the notebook. And we see roughly there are 28 kind of uh, Quen 2 decoder layer blocks here. Uh, and further, this is a 7D model in directly. There are 7 billion parameters in this model. Before we fine tune, <clears throat> we can actually look at accuracy on the random selection of the data, entire data. And we'll see the accuracy here is roughly 83%. Further, uh, we are going to convert this model into um, data set into training format. The training we are going to do using chat template. We are going to specify roles like, so we want to specify system roles and user, user role. If you're new to LLM, these things you can consider the system kind of is trying to tell LLM that what exactly is the goal of the LLM. And then the user is actually specific input is given for the LLM to perform that role. That's kind of very simple to take at it, but this is instruction tuned. So it is following some specific instruction uh, to do something. And here the instructions are that you want to classify news into four categories, world, sports, business, and science tech. And we are also giving instruction that always output just a news classification and select the closest category. Uh, sometimes like the category may not perfectly fit. We are saying it to select the closest category. And finally we are ending it in the user say that news classification is so it can follow with the answer. Uh, once we get the kind of, uh, we get this message, we have to pass through the chat template and all for the model kind of uh, to train properly when the pass in the chat template, uh, I put in these different tokens needed for system and user roles and uh, it kind of put in some special starting and ending uh, in tokens for us. We have to transform the training data. So it follows this uh, format. And the transform training data, we are creating different kind of roles on input text labels and original news. You have to see that any any LLM um, kind of fine tuning, you need to get uh, X and Y. X is kind of the input you're giving to the model and Y is what you want model to learn. So here Y part is what you want model to learn in the form of assistant. This existent currently is the system and user prompts. We're going to just uh, kind of uh, further uh, create train and test part from it. And the label is actually the Y part here where I was returning the label. Uh, which was what is actually the category of this news. I'm going to use most of the data as part of training and very small as test, uh, actually. And uh, further here, uh, we are visualizing it that in the training, we have roughly 119 rows and the test only have 240 k rows. So this test is actually the data which model has not seen during training. I will see what the model does on this test. So before we fine tune, let us see the accuracy only on the test, like we earlier saw accuracy on the on the entire full set randomly selector. Uh, so test test data, for example, a simple example looks like this as a special token which are added by the chat template. So we are saying that your goal is classify the news into four categories, the one which you are asked your model to do. And finally, model is kind of classifying this news for us uh, in the form of the assistant output, it should be sports. So this is actually the, data which has answers also in it. Finally, to measure test accuracy, we'll create just the system prompt uh, and the user prompt will not give it the assistant prompt. We are not going to give it the label. 
and let us run this. And if we run it, now this uh, code has like some else happening which you can follow in your free time, but a short summary is we're going to look at the assistant output and we're going to see if it matches with the label. If it matches with the label, it's correct. Otherwise, we are going to print the wrong results here. The wrong results actually are printed. We see on the test set, uh, uh, when we look at the first 100 examples only, it roughly has 79% accuracy. Now let us uh, kind of do the tuning of it. Can we increase this 79% further? One thing to consider here is uh, it is having 79% accuracy out of box. We have not done any fine tuning. We just gave it a system prompt. Uh, depending on, you can give it some different system prompt. This accuracy number may slightly differ, but you see the numbers, how they look like. We are going to tokenize it, use a kind of uh, LoRa configurations. We are going to train this model, We're going to use SFT trainer. Uh, here are some of the parameters which you can play with when you are uh, having more time and lots of GPU resources. You can increase the a number of steps you are going to run this. And you can also see when you want to do evaluation. Uh, other things in here are set uh, quite reasonably. You can also increase the batch sizes per device and all if your devices are powerful. In this case, I put them one to make sure model doesn't go out of memory. When we run this now for 100 steps, it roughly takes uh, one and a half hour to run. So I have already run this notebook. Uh, and in the 100 steps, I'm, every 30, 60, 90 step, we are printing training loss, validation losses. When the validation losses, training losses are printed in the further as the model is training, we see that training loss decreases. Validation loss is also decreasing, which validation is actually the test set around 240 examples. We are not going to use this data to train, but we are monitoring still that is model learning meaningfully on them. And we see, yes, indeed, validation loss has decreased over time, and it's almost as good as training loss. Both are very much in the similar range. Uh, after 100 steps. And in 100 steps, model has actually not even done one epoch. Uh, roughly, it has done maybe around 0.2 epochs or so, or less than that. So you have a larger data. You can actually throw in maybe seven, eight hours of training uh, if needed. Uh, with just one and a half hour, we'll see the model actually is doing quite well. You can save the pre-trained model if you like, but the checkpoints are already saved at 30, 60, 90. We are again going to tokenize the data because I have removed earlier few columns in the in, in during what so you will get all the columns again if you want to do anything else we, if you want to play with the regional news or whatnot. In here, I am actually just going to take the test the test part to see again what the test accuracy is. Uh, before fine tuning, we saw that, for example, the test accuracy was around seventy nine percent. After fine tuning, how does it look like? Like one and a half hour of fine tuning. And we see actually the test accuracy is 86%. So it's roughly increased by 7%. <clears throat> Remember, these are real world news articles and these are the news articles which model has not seen. So it's, it's quite a reasonable job which this model did. It's a 7 billion parameter model with a very simple fine tuning script. And that to fine tuning in the quantized space, we are able to gain 7% accuracy. Uh, that's one of the power of these LLMs that they can be uh, fine-tuned for whatever use cases you like, and they do amazing wonders of when you are playing within in, with these LLMs for, for your own use cases. I hope this helped. You can play with this notebook in your time and uh, can translate into any of your use cases as well.